What's up everyone? All right, so since I uploaded my videos on uh, E-Trade and Ameritrade, Fidelity and Charles Schwab, a bunch of you guys have asked in the comments, Ross, what about Interactive Brokers? Why don't you set up an account with Interactive Brokers and test that out? Well, I'm not gonna do that. Um, I trade with Interactive Brokers last year. It was a terrible experience and I will never trade there again. And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Okay, so last year when I traded at Interactive Brokers, I had the same exact problem that I had um, last week in E-Trade with orders routinely taking 20, 30 seconds plus to execute. And the final nail in the coffin for me with my Interactive Brokers account was on April 26th when I had a trade on MTSL that took over one minute to execute. It was a marketable limit order put at $2.50, the current time the stock was trading at about $1.38, and it took over a minute to execute, finally filling shares up at the top at $2.50. Now, I wanted to get in, I believe the stock had the potential to make a move up towards three, so you know, I was, I was like, well, you know, I'll, I'll still take a fill, even if it's a little higher, but it was, um, it was very, very frustrating, and that was just my final, it was the final straw. And after that, I started looking for a new place to trade. Now, the only reason I was using Interactive Brokers was because they offered um, settlement margin on a retirement account. And I was trading in a retirement account at that time. Um, I've since moved that account to Lightspeed and um, grew it from 25,000 to just about 200 grand in, um, well, I guess about 18 months. While at Interactive Brokers, it took me four months to grow it from six grand to 25. And part of that was because of this issue I was having with executions. So what I wanna do is I wanna log into the uh, Interactive Brokers account and kind of show you uh, the trade. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you like five minutes of my recap from April 26, 2018, um, which is like a little bit of a flashback because it's back in my old office. But um, I think you guys will enjoy it and you'll know why I don't use Interactive Brokers and I don't plan to go back. Now, one thing I'll give Interactive Brokers credit for is that they have a very secure login process. So I'm gonna um, type my login credentials here. And then as soon as I press enter, I'm gonna get an alert on my phone right here that I have to tap this message to authenticate the login. And I have to do it with my face. So until I've authenticated, it will not let me log in. So you always have to have your phone on you when you're logging into your um, Interactive Brokers account. Whereas with TD Ameritrade and E-Trade, they'll give you that two-step authentication trigger if you're logging in from a uh, unfamiliar device, right, or a different location, but it's not every single time. So I would say Interactive Brokers in that way is maybe a little more secure by default. I'm not sure if with TD or with E-Trade you can increase the security to make it two-step uh, as a default, but um, just something to note. So what I'm gonna do, even though the account is closed, I can still go in and see my reports and statements. So I'm gonna to go to reports. I'm gonna to go to, um, let's see, trade confirmations, and then I'm gonna run reports here. And I'm just gonna go right into the date that um, I know was the um, straw that broke the camel's back, which is um, back here on April 26th. Now, the nice thing about having done a recap every single day during my $583 challenge, 583 to a million bucks, is I can go back to this day on YouTube and, and go see, well, well, what happened that day? Because when everyone was posting these comments, I was like, yeah, so what trade was that? And I should make a video on it because, you know, people, you know, maybe didn't see that video from last year or, or whatever. And just like that, I was able to jump in on my reports. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and view this report. And then I was able to find the video and now take a clip of it. And I'll show you that clip uh, in a second. So what I'm gonna show you just here um, first on um, my screen is uh, just the, the two trades on MTSL, a buy order uh, at 241 and a sell order at uh, 266. A net profit of, uh, I don't know, it was like $1,100 but I lost over 700 in slippage because let's look at the buy order. The buy order I initiated at 9.40 and 24 seconds and it took over one minute. It took in fact a minute and four seconds until the order filled in its entirety. 
And that was because uh, for whatever reason, it just went extremely slowly. When I turned around to sell the shares right here, and I'll show you this in the recap as well, it also took about uh, 20 seconds to sell the, the position, which is terrible. I, I'm, I'm better off calling my phone, putting my broker on speed dial, and um, you know, being able to trade like that. Now, I did reach out to Interactive Brokers after this because I was incredibly frustrated. I was angry. I was just, ugh, I was livid. And it, I ended up on that day losing money in my main account. And part of it was because I was so frazzled over this issue in my retirement account. And they said, well, here's the deal. MTSL, because it has low average daily volume, we um, essentially, and this is very similar to E-Trade, they, um, they limit your ability to buy shares. And it sounded like there was a cap of the number of shares you could buy relative to the previous day's volume or something like that, some algorithm. And this stock, you know, which was a small cap, gap and go setup, gapping up, moving higher, um, you know, because the previous day's volume was low, it made it so buying 4,800 shares took over a minute. And in my opinion, if I wanna buy 4,800 shares of a stock, this is my money. If I wanna buy it, I wanna buy it. If I wanna buy 150,000 shares of this company because I believe they're gonna go up and they've got something really great coming, you know, coming out, I should be able to do that. What if Warren Buffett wants to come in here and you know, take a position? I mean, if you wanna buy, let us buy. That's, it's our money, it's our account. So after that happened with MTSL, I was furious and um, let's jump in here. Why don't, why don't you guys watch the recap? Just, I'll just like four minute section of the recap from April 26, 2018, and then I'll come back at you. Now, this is uh, the trade I took in my IRA. So I send the order to try to buy 9,000 shares at 224. It gets rejected because I don't have enough buying power. So I quickly type in 7,500 shares at 250. I type the order just like this, MTSL, 250, just like this, 7,500 shares using smart routing, and I press buy. I press the buy button at uh, 9, I guess 924, all right? And I fill 12 shares at 28, and then 100 shares at 28, and then 13 shares at 28. And then six seconds later, I fill another 475 shares at 43. And I'm asking myself, what is going on? This is crazy. Why am I not filling my order? My, the, the stock, my order was for 250. I should have filled the whole thing. So six seconds later, you know, whatever, seven seconds later, 10 seconds later, I fill uh, another 200 shares at 36, another 400 shares at 36. Let's just drag this down. In total, it took, let's see, it took a minute. It took one whole minute for me to fill my order. And I only filled a partial order. I, I only filled 4,800 shares of my 7,500 share order. It took one whole minute to fill 4,800 shares. All right, so that is what it is. It pops up, you know, and I'm like, all right, I just got to sell and I, I don't know how long it'll take to sell. So I press the sell button. I press the sell button at 9.43 and 49 seconds. And it takes here, as you can see, 30 seconds for my order to fill. It slowly fills, uh, I guess 25 seconds. At 70, at 62, 67, 66, 64, and 63. So, you know, this is incredibly frustrating because it's, um, there's nothing that I can do about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really powerless. I, I can complain, but, you know, nobody cares. So uh, my recommendation is not to trade with the software. Not to, no, it's not the software. Not to trade with interactive brokers if you're trying to be a scalp trader. If you're trying to get in and get out fast, this is not going to work for you. Look, I mean, here it is. Here's the proof. This took a minute for my order to fill. A whole minute. Come on. This is crazy. I wanted to buy 7,500 shares. Look, in, in one minute, it went from... 228 all the way up to 250. I mean, that's just lost profit. That's what it is. I should have filled the full 7,500 shares right down here in the 30s. And then when I had sold it up here in the 70s, the 60s, it would have been a really nice winner. It's just pathetic. It really is, is absolutely, in this, day, in this day and age. 
but it is what it is. So, you know, the good news is it's still a 6% winner. And so that's, that's great. And I just need to get my IRA above 25,000. You know, that's really my goal. Get it above $25,000. Uh, you know, as soon as Lightspeed offers settlement margin, I'm gonna switch over to them. And I, I'm at a point now where I might switch over to Lightspeed, even though I won't have settlement margin, at least if I could take one trade a week and because this this how, think about how much this cost me, um, you know, it cost me 2000 shares times 30 cents per share. So this one right here cost me like 600 bucks, 700 bucks. And so, you know, that's this happens almost every time I trade in this account. So a total of 15 trades, you're talking about seven thousand dollars in losses. If I had been trading this account with Lightspeed, even though I don't have settlement margin, I actually would have been in um, uh, a much better shape. So I'll prob I'm probably going to have to do that. I'm probably just going to have to transfer this to Lightspeed and uh, deal with no settlement margin until they offer it. So uh, this today I was using smart routing. I had I was given a suggestion from a student that smart routing was faster. So I was like, all right, I'll try it out. Uh, but you know, it, it was just as slow as it is with Arca and anything else. So. And you know, and maybe it's this particular route that they rerouted it to ISLA. I have no idea, but this is a standard that is so low. Um, you know, I, I I'd be better off trading on my on my phone. You know, and or, or at a certain point, I'd almost be better off calling the broker and telling them to place the order. It's just really really slow. Okay, so um, you know, obviously, I was a little frustrated. I was disappointed and, and annoyed, and uh, I was trying to use the smart routing because when I had used Arca and Nasdaq, those were just as bad. They were slow, and so I was like, well, you know, some students say, hey, smart routing is faster. I gave it a shot. It also failed, and that's when I had finally, you know, pulled the plug. I closed my Interactive Brokers account. I moved the funds over to Lightspeed, which allowed me to trade um, on margin, settlement margin with my retirement account. And um, you know, I really, I really haven't looked back. So I have no intention of going back to Interactive Brokers. I, I know some of you guys use them and love them. And I give you a lot of credit for, um, for that. I mean, it's, it's most likely that your strategy is different from mine in that if you're trading large cap stocks, there's no none of this sort of throttling orders issue. It's the stocks that randomly go from zero, you know, from a dollar to seven dollars in one day, and the previous day's volume was like fifty thousand shares. Those are the ones that probably trigger this issue, but those are the ones that you want to trade if you're trying to grow a small account, and that's what I'm all about: growing small accounts. All right, so I hope this video has been helpful. Leave me your comments below what you think of Interactive Brokers, and I will see you as always back in the chat room. You want to learn more about trading? Check out some of the links in my description. And if you have questions, ask them in the comments. I personally respond to every question posted on my channel. And don't forget to subscribe.